Jim. They do it by association through our biscular mycorrhizae and fungus. They said, I'll feed you this, and then guess what the plant does? This is the mother ship. They'll get the phosphorus, the zinc out of the mineral, and then they bring it back to the ship. They're doing it for a purpose. I need zinc. I need trace minerals. They do it through this process. So the more we put cover crops at the end of the year, the more we get cycling, the less lime we have to put because we built those biotic glues. Now we hold on to the calcium. Now we hold on to the zinc. Then minerals, the micronutrients get impregnated into the sands and the clays. Biology does that. It's the fungus that builds the organic matter and the bacteria and all these beautiful critters. They do it. So when a farmer tells me I don't want to do cover crops, I smile and I said, you don't know how the soil works, do you? So when you leave that corn ground bare, you leave it leaky. Soybean is really hard on the land and especially leave it bare. But what does soybean do the whole year? Dirk? In. They fix in. Okay, so what's the big deal? I mean, look, they're fixing in. Yeah, but when they have a lot of leaky nitrogen, guess what? The microbes go, ooh, nitrogen. I'm going to start eating the biotic glues. They eat the biotic glues, infiltration rate goes down. So how do we heal it? Put a cover crop. A lot of people say, well, in Iowa, I've heard we can't fix our problems with, with just cover crops alone. That's right. We got to stop putting so much stinking fertilizer out there. When you throw too much fertilizer, you eat the biotic glues. You eat the organic matter. You put a salt on the land. You lower the pH. Careful with your crack. I'm not going to be forgiving. I'm telling you, am I opposed to using fertilizer? No. It's a tool. Everything we have is a tool. So what hurts the biology? Fungicides, insecticides, herbicides, fertilizer, tillage. It's everything we do. So guess what we can do? Thank goodness they're resilient. Here's what I tell people to do. Cool it. Think before you go out there and do something. Reduce your inputs. Don't go, so if you have an outbreak of fungi, fungus, go spray the field. But don't go spray the next field if it's not there. Do you know how we do pest management in this country? Like chemotherapy. I said, Dwayne, just in case you get cancer, I want you to take chemo. You're not going to like that, are you? But why are we doing it in our agriculture fields? If you have an outbreak, take care of it. But here's what farmers will do. Well, old John had an outbreak I saw ahead in the co-op, and they're spraying that field. I better spray mine. He calls the co-op. So they spray that field, and that field, and the field, and the other field, and then it gets into the soil, and it hurts the biology. And then it lands up in the water. We don't need it there. So I'm saying use the tools with wisdom. That's what we're advocating. Because if you hurt this biology, we mess it up the whole system. They're the ones that bring the nutrients. Even in our grazing, if we overgraze, we affect the biology. If we take too much canopy, hay is the most one of the most destructive, just as bad as tillage. When you hay, you take all the nutrients away, you take the zincs, the calciums, and everything, and you haul it off. And then guess what happens? You affect the aggregate stability and the glue makers. Water doesn't infiltrate. Have you ever seen in hay field? Most of the water will run off it. Let me show you why. Okay, when I walk into a field, this is what I want to see. First thing I do is I pull out a shovel. When you go out there, that's the, we pull out every, every one of my soil, for, soil health farmers. The best tool you can take out is a shovel, right? Guess what we did last night? We were going out there digging last night with a shovel. This is what I want to see. If you walk, in fact, right now, we'll show you. There are five spheres that I want to see in the soil all the time. All the time, 24 seven. I wanna see an armor. This is called the detritus sphere. Armor, soil ecologists call this the detritus sphere. Okay? 
at the Detroit sphere for a second right here. Second thing I want to see is look at this, how beautiful this. My cottage cheese. Look at the aggregates. You see that? The more aggregates, so who makes the aggregates? The fungus, the glue, the, the organisms do, the bacteria, the roots. I want to see a lot of cottage cheese. When I go to an organic farm, will I see a lot of cottage cheese? No, you won't. Too much tillage. Even some no-tillers. If I go to a no-till field and I don't see much cottage cheese, you know what it's telling me? You got crappy rotations. You got a crappy rotation. I better see a lot of cottage cheese. See, you know what I compare you with? First thing you invite me to your farm, I'm gonna walk to your grass waterway. I'm gonna pull out the shovel and I'm gonna judge you by your grass waterway. The only functioning soils in this country for the most part is our buffers and our waterways. That's pretty humbling because I'll pull out the shovel and they better look like that. Guess what? I won't see them look like that. In conventional, you won't have a lot of cottage cheese. They get consumed. So I gotta see cottage cheese. Inside the cottage cheese, there's pores. So this is called the agratosphere. Inside the agratosphere is the porosphere. And then the other one, the most important one, the rhizosphere. Here's where all the liquid sun gets fed. Builds the aggregates, gets starts the whole party. Okay? So the next one is the last one, the drillosphere. It's Greek for the earthworm. It's the earthworm sphere. Notice the word sphere. Areas of influence. All of them have to be present. I want to see earthworms, cottage cheese, armor, roots, pores. One shovel, all the time, every time. I will not see this in conventional systems. It'll be buried. I will not see them in, I will not see them in over, um, I will not see them in conventional. I will not see this in organic farms. They're usually buried. Okay? In no-tills, I will see if they're using a lot of cover crops and residue, you'll see them at periods of time. You will see it all the time. Now notice, just for a second, everybody get on their knees here. Let me show you. Now pull your grass aside and what do you see? Even in your lawn. Dead What's grass. the first thing you see? Dead grass. Oh, armor. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the armor. If I walk into that grass, what will we see? Armor. If I walk into that forest, what are we going to see? Armor. Armor. That's, you know what that's called? Biomimicry. We are now mimicking nature where we're getting cover crops and we're rolling and creating instant armor. So why is this armor so critical, guys? What does this armor do? It stops the raindrop from hitting directly. Excellent. Away. Excellent. Give me another one. What else does it do? Protecting. From temperature? Huge, steep regulation of temperature and, and moisture. It, it regulates temperature. If you don't have the armor, if that soil temperature gets over 113 degrees, you shut microbes down from cycling. They don't release enzymes. So it gets too stinking hot. If I run a soil thermometer on the temperatures, what do they get to? We've seen them 140, 150. If they reach 140, you're killing bacteria already. I can walk in the cornfield in the middle of summer before the canopy comes up. You have soil temperatures of 110, 120 degrees. You already shut nutrient cycling down. Okay, what else does that armor do? That's critical. Oh, by the way, only 65%, only 35% of that armor becomes organic matter. Dwayne, so what happened to the other 60-some percent? CO2. It's not a poisonous gas. It's part of the system. The problem is we want all of our, our CO2 in the soil. So 35% of this goes to making organic matter. 8% goes to the mafia, <laughs> the organisms. And then the other 65 goes off the CO2. Do I ever want to get rid of this? Never. NRCS standards say you've got to have 30% of the ground covered with armor. That's idiocy. 100%. I don't want to lose one bit of my carbon, and I don't want to lose any soil erosion. 5T, 10T is not defensible scientifically. I don't know who came up with that, but it's bogus. I want zero T. I don't want no soil leaving my premise. It's too, it's too precious. So, another thing. 
When you have that armor, guess what else happens? As this residue is breaking down, it gets off CO2, and the back of the plant is stomata. It picks it up, increases photosynthesis and water efficiency. Here's what I want you to understand today. Everything's connected. Everything is one. That's the premise of ecology. Theology, everything's connected, everything is one. Quantum physics, everything's connected, everything is one. Please understand, when you walk out there in that field and you go run that equipment, you understand you're going to have impact. Everything's connected, everything is one. That is an incredibly important principle that you've got to learn in that natural system. Any questions? So everybody's with me before we go in. Okay. Name me one of the spheres. See if I did a good job. Demosphere? Yeah. Which one? Demosphere? No. Distritosphere? Good. Distritosphere, yeah. Okay. <laughs> armor. Got to have armor. Give me another one. I'll give you a hint, look. Cottage cheese. Jeez, the agratosphere. Cottage cheese. <laughs> Chris, give me another one. The pore sphere. The, inside the cottage cheese is the pores. Give me another one, honey. Rhizosphere. Oh, well, this is the conduit. And then one more. Drilla. The drilla. Good for you. Now, you, Alex, you go. Are you married, Alex? Yes. Go tell your wife, guess what, honey? I know about the drill spare. <laughs> Press your wife. Whoa, Alex, are you doing? Are you smoking cover crops? <laughs> that boy's doing drugs. The drillosphere. The earthworm is a keystone organism. Keystone. Do you know why they call it keystone? Because if all, if for earthworms to be there. The protozoa, the microbes, and all the biology has to be, the soil food web has to be intact to feed them. They're not there, you got a problem. So how do you find out? You go dig a 12 inch by 12 inch, 12 inches deep, 12 inch by 12 inch cubic foot, and you do it in the spring. 20 worm, I want 20 earthworms in a cubic foot. Four earthworms per shovel full, that means you got 850 to a million and a half earthworms. You know what I love about them? They don't complain. They show up to work on time. I don't need to put diesel in them. And they will transform your soil completely in the top six inches in less than 27 years. Now think about it. They went through their mouth and they pooped out your whole soil in the top six inches. That's 2.2 million pounds that went through their right here and pooped it on the other side and just created some awesome biology. That's how powerful they are. And guess what? I didn't have to put diesel in them. And the less I mess with them, all you gotta do is cover crops. They asked me, Archuleta, you got one practice, one practice only for all cropland in the world. What would it be? Cover crops. Even before no-till. And I love no-till. Now, if you want me to get you off your, a lot of your inputs, you've got to be doing the no-till with the cover crops. I'm sorry. If you want me to cut you on your fertilizer, cannot do it without no-till and the covers. If you want to do half your fertilizer, no-till and covers. There's no option. Let me tell you why no-till is so darn important. We'll go inside. Now, let's say you lived here in this, in this nice little house as a microbe. And all of a sudden, Alex says, man, I got to go do some disking and trash the house. And by the way, I want you to go work. So let me put it to you personally. Let me go to your house, knock it down with a bulldozer, and I want you to go to work next morning. That's what you're doing with disrupting the house. Oh, by the way, to bring the house back, you need huge, huge amounts of carbon again and a lot of biology to fix it again to build the structure again. But then you'll go back again next year and trash it again. Then we wonder why we're going broke. That's the whole point. I cannot get you off nitrogen in a lot of those inputs if you're still doing tillage. Then I happen. Because you're not following nature's principle of low disturbance. Okay, so we buy, we walk in. Remember, our job is to reduce our chemical and physical and biological disturbance. Reduce it. Careful with your fungicides, careful with your herbicides and your, and your, and your insecticides. Careful. 
Careful with tillage. Careful with overgrazing. That's what this is about. Once you understand how the system works, Chris, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Has it made a difference in your guys' lives? Changed your lives, didn't it? That's what this is about. Okay, what time is it?